So we looked at frequency distributions and, uh, you know, sometimes it's better to group the data. So instead of having, if, uh, it's a more usable group. So instead of looking at uh, how many students here got one mark and how many got two mark and how many got three mark and four and five and six, it's better to group the data into how many students got between one and five 6 and 10, 11, 15, 16, 20, 21, 35. It's just, they're more, it's more usable that way, okay? And so often uh, we group the data like this. So we, here we have 11 students got between 1 and 5, 12, 6 and 10, 15 and so on, okay? Now, what is the modal, what is the mode of that group? Or we say the modal class what's the modal average there okay well the mode is the most frequent the most frequent group is 15 so between 11 to 15 marks is the most common because 15 students got that okay to find the the mean x bar of the data the best we can do is to estimate by using what's known as a mid interval value for x so this is x uh, well, sorry, that's the group. We're going to find uh, a mid-interval value for this group, and we're going to call that x. Okay. So, how do we do that? Well, the mid-interval value or the x value for this group would be one plus five divided by two would be three, and the middle the mid value for this would be six uh, plus ten is sixteen. Five two is eight. The middle value, mid interval value would be 11 plus 15, right, which is 13, and so on. And I've redrawn the table down here so that it now looks like the marks with the class intervals, the mid, mid uh, interval value, and then this, the remaining uh, frequency which hasn't, hasn't changed. Okay. So to find the mean of this data now, we're going to sum, uh, sum f times x, so 11 times 3, plus 12 times 8, plus 15 by 13, plus 9 by 18, plus 3 by 23, which is all detailed there. And we divide that by the sum of the frequencies. So 11 plus 12 is 15, 9, 3, whatever that is. So... That tells us that x bar is equal to 555 divided by 50, and that's equal to 11.1. And again, there's two ways to find the median. So we could write out the data. We could write out 3 11 times, followed by 8 x times, followed by 13 x times, and so on. And we have 50 numbers, so we'd go all the way to the 25th, uh, sorry, the, the 25th and 26th, and we'd get those two numbers and get the average of those and we'd find uh, what the median is. But, you know, there's just a more, there's a quicker way of doing that than right listing out all the, the numbers and looking for the 25th and 26th value. We can just see where does the 25th, and 26 uh, values fall. It's not, the 25th is not going to be in the first 11 numbers, uh, or indeed the 11 plus 12, uh, the first 23 numbers, but then we kick into this large area here where it's uh, up to 38 because there's 15 numbers here. So our 25th and 26th value must be in here somewhere and that's equal to 13. So the median uh, is equal to 13, or the class in, or the marks interval uh, of median is equal to 11 uh, to 15 group. Okay, so let's talk about range and variability. Okay, so range refers to how spread out data is. Okay, so range is found by taking the largest value, sorry, taking the smallest value from the largest value. So we've Ava and Sean have just done a test, or they have their grades here, and we can see that the mean of Ava's grades, if we were to calculate it, is 12, and the range goes from 18 to 8, her best score to her smallest score. So there's a range of 10. Whereas Sean, uh, he's, 
mean is actually the same as Avis it's 12 and his range is smaller it's at 6 so we could say that uh, you know Sean's scores are less spread out and they're more consistent so that mean is 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 a good good true mean of Sean's performance whereas Ava's spread his data is spread out and that shows variability because this this range is by 10 10 marks her grades so we use range uh, as a measure of variability and Ava's here shows variability if there's a large range number so when we compare data uh, we use the range and we use either the mean the mode or the medium and that helps us make in more informed decisions about uh, the, the best averages to use and we'll just talk now about quartiles and interquartile range okay so look at this data here consider this data and there's 15 pieces of data here and they're all listed here in ascending order okay so our median is the middle number okay and that's halfway in the data set okay and we call that q2 now our first quartile is the lower quartile and that's a quarter of the way into the data so with three bits of data here, this is halfway, with three bits of data here and three bits of data there. This middle piece of data is the lower quartile and it's equal to five. That's Q1 is five. And if we we need to find our upper quartile, we're working towards now finding the interquartile range. We'll get there in a second. But our upper quartile then, if we look uh, we need to go three quarters of the way into the data and that's here, it's 14. We have three pieces of data either side of that. This is our Q3. And our interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1 and that's equal to 14 minus 5 is equal to 9. And that's known as the interquartile range and that's how you seek to find it. So here's an example. Find the median and interquartile range of this data set. And this data contains 14 pieces of data. Okay, so let's rewrite the data in order. Okay, and we have seven pieces of data up to here and seven onwards. So we'll just break those up there and we'll find the median. We divide the data into, find the median by 8 plus 9, the two middle numbers, divided by 2 is equal to 8.5. If you remember, when we have an even number of data, like we have here 14 pieces of data, then we have to find the average of the middle two. Okay. Now, we have half the data this side and half the data that side. So we find Q1 by saying, well, there's three pieces of data there, there's three pieces of data there, so Q1 is equal to 6, that's the fourth term in this case here. And we look to find uh, Q3, okay, and three pieces of data there, three there, and this is three quarters of the way uh, into the data, this is Q3, Q3 is equal to 10. So the interquartile range is uh, equal to Q3 minus Q1, 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. Okay, another example. A box of French apples uh, has nine apples in it. Uh, the weight in grams of the apples were these nine pieces of data here. Find the mean. So the mean is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers, 105 grams. Another box contained nine, same amount, South African apples. Their mean weight was 107 grams and the range uh, of of their weight was 19 grams. Make two comments, okay? Well, I suppose we have the range, uh, you know, from the smallest apple to the biggest apple from the South Africans. Let's find that for the French from this data here. And there's 19 grams in the, in of a range there. So we can see that uh, the, the, the same range is in the box of South African apples as the French. In other words, they, they range from smallest to largest by the same uh, weight, 19 grams. 
but what we would say is the second thing we'd say is that the South African apples are better value as their mean weight is higher because the South African apples are 107 grams per apple rather than 105 and all things considered as in the range is the same South African apples are better value. So now the next uh, from now on this video will only concern itself with uh, senior uh, senior uh, maths so if you're doing uh, junior cert maths you this is not part of your course, okay? So we're going to look at standard deviation, okay? And it's that's the Greek symbol for standard deviation. And standard deviation is a measure of spread of data. So it tells us how much variation there is in the data from the mean average, okay? A low standard deviation tells us that there's small variation and that the data is close to hugs the mean, Whereas a high standard deviation tells us that the data spreads away from the mean. Okay? And generally in statistics there's a, a rule called the empirical rule. Okay, and the empirical rule says tells us that for any large population with a mean of X bar and a standard deviation, about sixty-eight percent of the values of that population will lie between one standard deviation of the mean. In other words, 68% of the values will be equal to the mean plus whatever the standard deviation is uh, uh, from there to the mean minus whatever the standard deviation is. And it goes on further to say that 95% of the values will be between two standard deviations of the mean so that's x bar plus 2 standard deviations to x bar minus 2 standard deviations. And then it even says that almost all of the data, 99.7%, will be that close to the mean that they will lie within 3 standard deviations of the mean. So how do we calculate standard deviation? Okay, Well, standard deviation is found by getting the square root of the sum of x minus the mean squared over the number of numbers. And for a frequency table, it's found by getting the square root of the sum of f times x minus x bar squared over the sum of frequencies. And we will go on to look at an example of these in the next video.